What's going on, family? It's your man, K to the second letter. I am here on Southside Rabbi, of course, with my dis distinguished co-star, Martin Luther Kingdom himself. Oh, I mean the Dream really? Hudson, okay. okay? But we need to set ourselves aside. Oh, my gosh. Brother, we got to set ourselves aside because Southside Rabbi has been eclipsed. Somehow, <laughs> somehow been able to get a dignitary. Oh, man. A man of prestige, value, worth that cannot be calculated. It's incalculable. It's incalculable. It's not an easy word to say. I struggled with it. It was in one of my sermons. I took it out because I couldn't say it. Uh, <laughs> we have been blessed. Oh, my gosh. To have one of the strongest minds and biceps <laughs> just to biceps. step no. on this what? show. Now, I don't know if this is racist, <laughs> but this Samoan brother is literally a physical representation of what's happening in his mind, his heart. Oh the strength gosh. that you see on the outside, <laughs> it's right there on the inside. <laughs> Maui, sit down. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, make man. some noise for the influencer, philanthropist, uh, activist, rapper, activist, sushi chef, <laughs> and he's married to Wonder Woman. Believe it or not, we'll talk about that here in a second. Make some noise for my homeboy, Tidashi. Yeah. <laughs> man, it's an honor to be here, bro. I have never been introduced in such an immaculate way. <laughs> In such a way that now I will never doubt myself again. You cannot. You have literally <laughs> cured you? insecurities within me, brother. They are no longer oh, there. Oh my gosh! After such an introduction. Wow. That's a yes, Southside man. Rabbi introduction. Hey man, Once I, I put love the it. Silk, the, the do rag on. When you put the silky smooth on, huh? it's, a it's a different Booker story. Booker T. Washington it's himself. It's a different story. <laughs> We are uh, blessed to have Tadashi here with us mm -hmm. in the house. T-Dot, how are you feeling, my brother, in these 2021 times? Man, bro, first of all, it's an honor to be here. Thank y'all for letting me come through. Mm -hmm. I oh, appreciate man. it. Yo, this is this is awesome, bro. <laughs> like, to see it on the screen and then to be here in person, y'all yeah. y'all should be jealous. I'm just going to tell you now. <laughs> you should Feel be it. jealous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let it sizzle in your spirit. <laughs> man, 2021, man, I'm excited for a new year. I was excited to see 2020 go ahead and pass mm -hmm. to the rear view. Right. If you will. And um, man, I'm just excited about the opportunities God's put before us in 2021. Right, right, right. And even just moving into like January is not over yet. And right. I've already seen a lot of enjoyment. I've already seen a lot of um, activity in right. this one month of 2021. Right, yeah, right, right. Some good, some bad. Sure. But nonetheless, there is there are things, I think, moving forward and progressing in a way in the world that we can kind of take note of. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, in 2020, we was in our houses or we were tucked away, secluded, Facts, right. isolated. Mm -hmm. And now people are a little more willing to be, you know, hopefully in a wise way, but people right. are more willing to be out, right. be around, yes. be involved. Yes. Um, and as long living as we can be informed, they're yeah. living a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. So I'm excited about that, man. Yeah. That's 2021. Dope, man. That's Amen. dope, man. Amen. Um, Tadashi is, uh, I've mentioned him several times um, in... Many of the things that I've done publicly uh, on Instagram. Um, in mm -hmm. fact, I preached a sermon at Passion um, December 31st, mm -hmm. um, uh, which was a few weeks ago. And uh, I told his story in um, in the sermon. It was powerful. And uh, I, yeah. he's just had a tremendous impact on, on me um, on and off the stage. We've toured together. Um, we've done a, 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 more shows than I can remember. Um, and then I have been with Tadashi uh, through some of the more difficult, yeah. probably the most difficult season in his life. Now, um, I remember um, actually seeing you. Um, you and I had a tour together mm -hmm. where we, we toured Cali for about two weeks, yeah. a few months after um, something something. Uh, incredibly tragic happened. Can you talk yeah. to us a little bit about yeah. the, your story yeah, and then yeah. maybe also bring it into Chase Wilderness? Yeah, bro. So um, I think what you're referring to, first of all, I 
we don't see each other enough. Yeah. So these moments are good to kind of reminisce, yeah, yeah. share, sure, think sure. through some stuff. Yeah. Uh, but as you were talking, I remember honestly being, um, I remember, I want to say, did you go to, uh, where, did you, did, I don't know if you performed. I know Reconcile did. Did you come to the Bubba ba- Bubba's Bash no, joint? I did not, but I remember it, though. You remember it. Yes. Okay, okay, now, okay. Is that what you were flying home for, from? Mm-hmm, okay, got gotcha. you. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so ultimately... Was that in Orlando? No, 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 no. This was after. This was after. Okay, got you. So I didn't know if you were there or not. But I just remember several moments being with you yeah. and going through not just moments of grief, but also going through moments of... Um, of identity struggles, right. moments of, of security within myself mm-hmm. and having to battle what the world and, and even an industry can do to your soul mm. and becoming jaded and becoming frustrated yes, and becoming I, blind. Yes. So those moments for me have been growing moments, mm. ultimately in a place where you you think, ah, oh, man, well, you know, you reach a certain status or age or place and you're, you don't deal with those things. Mm. And the Lord has had many moments of humility yeah. fly my way. Thanks. But you were a part of a lot of them, so that's Amen, why I bring bro. it up. But one thing, um, I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll answer the question. Um, so in, in 2013, I'm at a concert. I'm actually uh, in in uh, Florida, and then I, I, I come from, I go from Florida to the Northeast, and then I fly home. Gotcha. Uh, and I, I typically try to call home before I, f- I fly out. Uh, I do so. I leave a voicemail. I land. I have a voicemail. And I'm like, well, of course they call me back. But I never checked the voicemail. I just called home. Yeah. And uh, in that moment, Danielle, uh, Wonder Woman for those people yes. watching. Yes. Um, Danielle answers the phone and she's crying. Like she's sobbing. She's wailing. And she says, um, uh, he didn't make it. And I thought to myself, what is she talking about? Who didn't? Wh- who? I'm thinking somebody's coming by the house. I'm like, who? And she said, Chase, he didn't make it. And I go, What? Yeah, we had to take him to the hospital. And as soon as she said that, it all clicked. Um, and we, you all, you've all traveled. Like you know what it's like to fly in an airplane, land, and and they make the announcement, "Welcome to such and such or wherever you are." Right. And then for that moment, in most experiences on a plane, it's just silent as people kind of sit and acclimate to the to where they just landed. Right, They're just right, right. waking up. In that silence, that is usually typical of a flight when it lands. I erupted and broke all of the codes of what you're supposed to do in those moments. I was out of my seat. I was yelling. I was hitting the wall. And the flight attendant, who who I'd had a conversation with already, saw me and said, are you okay? And in this ironic fashion, during the flight, I tried to share the gospel with a lady next to me. Wow. And she ended up turning to comfort me because in my gospel presentation, I told her, um, you have to have faith. Wow. It's it. it the works come because of the faith, not mm. the other way around. Right. Mm. And so she was she was literally this older, older white lady. I wish I knew her name, man. I think about it all the time. Mm. She was leaning forward, rubbing my back and saying, just have faith, just have mm. faith, just have faith. Oh, and so I believe throughout this journey of dealing with losing Chase, that has been the the message overall for mm. myself. Mm. Um, in the moments where I definitely spiraled and went to dark places, I got home from the flight, um, went into the house, saw Danielle, and we embraced and then collapsed. And I don't remember who got us up, but somebody got us up and took us to our room, mm. and we stayed in the room for four days. Mm. We didn't eat. We didn't drink anything. We just cried, prayed, slept, cried, prayed, slept, looked at pictures, stuff like that. Mm. So when I when I emerged out of the room, my mom was there. Other people were there. I didn't even know people were in the house. Mm. Um, and and um, my my pastor at the time uh, came up and he said, "Hey, we have to have some serious conversations because currently um, Chase's body is still at the hospital mm. on the in the onsite morgue, but they're going to have to do something with removing him and whatever you guys choose to do." And that brought such a level of pain and finality mm. to the situation where you at one point were sitting in in a place of disarray and somewhat hopefulness like you know you go through something in life and you think I can turn it around yeah, or I can yeah, fix right, it right. I can undo it right yeah. 
and there was no one doing this. And I didn't, I didn't know that at the time. I didn't know how to receive that at the time. Um, and then I'll share this. I've, I actually never shared this with anybody. Speaking of undoing. So um, me and my wife, we always have college students live with us yeah. since we've been married. Like mm-hmm. we, we want college students to stay with us, uh, help provide a, a level of, of lifestyle to them that yeah. they couldn't afford anywhere else, right, like, like, help right. them save money, yeah. so on and so on. Yeah. And in the process, all we ask in return is that you are a big sister to our boys right? because we don't have any daughters. So we want you to be a big sister to them. Right. And we want we want you to walk with us in like a discipleship relationship. Right, right. And, and usually it's been phenomenal. Well, the young lady that was living with us at the time knew some people who came by the house to, to offer their condolences uh, for us losing Chase. And there was a woman with him who in the process of wanting to offer her condolences really had used the moment to come to our home and say, um, um, you are, you are dishonoring the Lord by lacking faith. You should have faith that God could raise him. God could literally raise him right now. If you would have faith, will you pray with me? And she reached out her hand and, 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 and I, you know, I'm now, in a sober-minded place, I'm like, I think of all the Mortal Kombat moves I could do to finish her. It's like, I just, I know there's some things I could do to, to teach you a lesson now. Yeah. But in the moment, all I could think about was how this was not helpful. It just didn't right. seem Excel, helpful, oh bro. Yeah. It was the exact opposite. Although in her mind, in her perception, which was her reality, she was being the most helpful she could be. Yeah. So and and, and she and, thought and, she was bringing the best, bringing right. the best she could. And in in addition to that, she was an older woman. Like she was sorry, she was she was an older woman. She was literally. I mean, she had to be like in her 60s. So it wasn't this moment of where I was going to just go off on this older woman. Right. But in the moment, I just stopped. I said, no, 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 no. You can put your hand down. What you're saying now is not helpful. I appreciate you saying what you're saying, um, but you're 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 four or five days after the fact mm. coming to bring a message. Now, if for some reason you happen to be an inkling of the Messiah, that would be a different story. Yeah. Um, or if there was even a moment where this would have been set up through someone other than this strange occurrence right. because you heard hearsay, mm. maybe I would have given you more time. Right. But you can leave now. And I walked in the house, told somebody else what happened, and then they went out and body slammed yes. it on the ground, <laughs> and figuratively speaking. Um, but anyway, yeah. that I had never shared that, but I, I shared because, again, she was in a, in a moment where the message was just have faith, just have faith. She was a temptation in a lot of ways mm. to pervert the idea of what having faith would what mean. Right, mean. Bro, right. it was such a struggle because there was always this second guessing of, well, what if I wouldn't have went to those shows? Or what if I would have just mm. brought them with me? Or what if what if we could have did this? Or what if we could have did that? And the what if game is is a never ending loop and cycle of punishment on yourself that yeah. you yeah. you never find peace in. Mm. And she was a part of that narrative of the never ending cycle mm. of what if, mm. what if, mm. what if. And um and so it took years to really walk through what that meant. And so one of the things that I wanted to do, I didn't want to I didn't want to belittle my son's life and use it as a means of my betterment or um, my desires for whatever type of life I wanted, none of that. And so it, it's it been years after the fact, but I couldn't shake the heart of one, we don't have daughters. Mm. I really, I I grew up dreaming of the day I'd be a dad girl, mm. a, a girl dad, I mean, a girl dad. Mm-hmm. A girl yeah. dad. And so uh, I was like, yo man, I just, I dream of that, I want that. But in every act, in every moment, I have tons of nieces. <laughs> I got, right, right. I got tons. Literally, my my nephew just had an, a, a niece. I'm like, okay, so now I have a great niece, nice. and now nice. now I have all my siblings. They have all all girls. Right, mm-hmm. right. Maybe two boys out of the group besides my oldest uh, nephew. And I'm like, yeah. okay, Lord, I, I get it. So you're, I, I will, you're too masculine to make a woman. That's it. I'm, ah! I'm too. It's, it's, it's too much of a man. Too much of a man. I'm too much of a man. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I found myself saying, man, God, you got another plan. I'm just going to figure that out. Uh-huh. Uh, so it, we, we, my wife and I started this thing called Chase Wellness. Yes. Uh, in honor of Chase and the idea of wellness being uh, a holistic pursuit of your health. Mm, but when it. you speak of health in America because of, uh, because of capitalism, mm-hmm. because of um, idolatry of self, we only think physical. Right. We only exactly. think exterior. Exactly. Right. When, when all aesthetic. All aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, but but little substance. Right. And you have to you have to consider when you speak of health, your mental health, mm-hmm. your emotional health, your spiritual health, environmental health, right. Um, yeah. Financial health, relational health. There's right. so many different aspects to to health that we should.
should be thinking of. And and even your mental health was the big one for me in that moment of of dealing with losing my son. So Chase Wellness began to be, at first, just a way to kind of chronicle what I was doing, what I was facing. And eventually it grew into a heart of what was always there, which was to love people in a way that I would love my son if he was here. Mm. What can I do to honor his name and love someone else the way I would encourage him to love someone right. if he was here or how I would love him if he was here, mm. uh, tangibly speaking. Mm-hmm. And so in a tangible outworking of my love for Chase, we started this organization to, to do uh, a few different things, um, provide a level of um, um, provide a level of information that would hopefully lead to inspiration, that would lead to an idea of um you actually pushing yourself forward into this becoming a lifestyle of right. whatever that means. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I, I say um, uh, education, uh, encouragement, and equipping. Mm. Those are the three things that Chase Wellness focus on, focuses on to, to push people into a place of, of pursuing wellness right. in yeah. their life. Yeah. So my wife is a personal trainer. Yes. She's a certified yoga instructor, certified Pilates instructor, yeah. instructor yeah. certified uh, cycling instructor. Yeah. Uh, and so she is doing that aspect of it. And then I've done some work with learning how to walk into into rooms to be a counselor of sort for people. Um, I feel like it's a natural part of my disposition. Mm-hmm. But in addition to that, being educated about it, right, I've right. had I've had minimal conversations. But uh, I'm I'm reaching out. Um, I need to reach out to him this year uh, with uh, Paul Tripp, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, talking yeah. with him, um, and he that gave me a lot write of encouragement. A book every day, every yeah, day, that boy. <laughs> He's, he's every day. Nice. I just yeah. literally just got a new Paul Tripp book yesterday. I got one two days ago. That's what I'm saying. Two days ago, I was like, you don't never stop writing. I'm prolific, man. Right. Yeah. What I, kind of book deal does he right. have? Right. Exactly. Kind of, right. I'm like, see, he, he, he did this a horrible garage. book deal or it's a great right, book right, deal. Right, right, right. Exactly. One or the other. They slaving right, that, slaving yeah. that brother out. I need another yeah. one in six weeks. <laughs> six weeks. Six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so, but talking with him, talking with some different people back home, and then one of the biggest things is talking with my own therapist. Mm. So, Yep. A year ago, a year and a half ago now, uh, I started going to therapy, and that's been one of the main things to help me walk through losing Chase. I love that. And, and really become myself. Not Let me say it a different way because I don't want to belittle any any experience of any kind. When you lose a loved one, it is like losing a limb. That's mm. how that's how people describe it. Mm. It's like losing, and and you and I've spoken to them because they're relatives, but also reading books. Uh, there's a good book called "The Body Keeps the Score." If you haven't oh, read it, yes. mm-hmm. uh, and, and and it speaks about the the trauma of losing a limb for a war vet, but them feeling the limb there right. waking kind of up, phantom. Mm-hmm. like oh, the, yeah. the phantom, the phantom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. and so. You you feel those moments, but but you wake up to reality like that's not that's not there. Mm-hmm. It's not it's not real for real. Um, and so in that, my body's kept the score. There's trauma there, and so therapy has been a way for me to exist in a new normal of my myself. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily go back to my old self. Right, right. Uh, that person doesn't exist gone, anymore. Yeah. But become the bet the the best version of myself now in light of everything. And therapy's been. Talk therapy specifically, because in my experience, when you live in an inner city or, or a predominantly black and brown community or you go to a predominantly black and brown school and someone says therapy, it's usually medicinal. They're exactly. usually yes. giving yep. you a pill exactly. or yes. they're giving you some sort of regimen yep. to, to inoculate you mm-hmm. right, right, to, right. To, and to, and to uh, subdue you. Right. But in reality... Talk therapy should be the first step, for, in my facts, opinion, facts, facts. for for black and brown communities. Oh my gosh! Yes. But it's not. And my my therapist is an older white woman, and she says it to me like, "We need more of my kind in your spaces mm. uh, for people to know one, it exists; two, there's there's access to it; mm. and three, the benefits of it beyond. Oh uh, yeah, I got to say what I needed off my chest real quick. Right. You mm. know, it isn't a. It's not a. It's not a quick telephone call moment, but it's an actual like living alongside someone else mm-hmm. walking with you and that yeah. through chase wellness i want to do some of that so. it's powerful man thank that's you man. Powerful, that, man no that's very powerful yeah. man and, we'll, and thank you for sharing that yeah, like, yeah for sure i think one, one of the things um well i have two questions yeah. um one question is when you were sort of sitting in the darkness i know that the the thing that most people will be looking for is what's the silver bullet to just make this all go away you know what i'm saying like what 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 is it a book did somebody say something to you was it some 
It's and it's crazy. You, you brought up that that lady. I was at um, the lady who came to your house yeah. and and gave this incredibly unhelpful comment about faith, mm-hmm. which I love that you described it as that which is tempting, not yeah. right. that which is truly in step with what God is even calling you to do. I remember um, probably about three months ago, um, uh, a, br- a young boy, he's like 13, 13 year old boy committed suicide who was a part mm-hmm. of our uh, community. Man. And um, and we went to uh, his funeral was in another state, but the church had basically like a memorial service um, mm-hmm. that I, I, I prayed at it and was just kind of there for the mother and, and, and the father. And um, while I was talking to the, the mother, this lady walked up to the mother who was wailing. Mm-hmm. She's mm-hmm. wailing. Mm-hmm. Her son, I mean, she found her son, you know, yeah. in a yeah. pit mm-hmm. with a gun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, mm-hmm. this lady walked up to us and said, you don't need to do all that crying. You need to do all that crying. You know, you, you, you he's in heaven now. Everything is fine. This is a, mm-hmm. a day to celebrate. You know what I'm saying? Life is better now. Blah, 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 blah. You know, and she, she, I think she mentioned some kind of bio prayer, and I, I cut her off. Praise it was the me Lord. and my um, Pastor Randall. We were mm-hmm. sitting there, and we just sort of like, nah. Good. Yeah, we, we're praying. Good. And she Because she kept saying, uh, the sister kept saying, I can't pray right now. I can't pray right now. Yeah, right. And yeah, I yeah. said, that's okay. I'll pray for you. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That's good. Right. That's good. I'll pray. We're part of the same body. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I'll pray. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, man, I'm just getting emotional thinking about it, how mm-hmm. in these situations, people think that they can come in with the magic touch, mm-hmm. what you should have done to make this all right. And my question to you is, is there... You are not speaking some some. You're not someone who sits here in, in a hypothetical yeah. situation. Yeah. You walked through it. You lived it. Um, and, and and not to not to disconnect your experience from from folks who have not gone through mm-hmm. that yet, because mm-hmm. we will all right. We are mm-hmm. all going to walk down that dark, lonely road of suffering. Mm-hmm. All of us, mm-hmm. to one degree or or the other. Yeah, man. My my question to you is. In contrast with those who try to come in with some some special thing to, to mm-hmm. make it all right, and you know, th- you know, is there is there a thing? You know what I'm saying, or 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 is it just a season? What what is it that brings one out of that, and and can you accelerate that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That is a phenomenal question, man. Um, so one, I, I have an explanation, but I'll say first with. assurance there is no magic bullet Hmm. there is no magic formula there is no escaping life Hmm. and that is kind of what what you kind of deal with in this in in this world overall you can't escape life like Hmm. you you deal with everyone let me say this and, and and segue into it more um Everyone deals with a level of suffering in their life. Mm-hmm. We've just been conditioned either because of American uh, American ideals or because of family perspective or because of your own insecurities. We've conditioned ourselves to rationalize suffering as a happenstance mm. of, of minimal proportion. Wow. wow. So... When you have, a, like, I remember the first time I had an overdraft fee in my account. Yeah. I didn't know the bank did that. No one told me they were going to do <laughs> right, that. Right. I never got taught about it. Yeah. But I needed that $15 to cover my utility bill. Up. So where am I going to get $15 now? I don't have it. And that's, that. no joke, $15. So I walked down to the plasma center, gave plasma, got $30, paid my utility bill. Sorry, right. I keep going at your direction. No, you're good. Um, <laughs> but pay my utility bill. But that was a moment of suffering in my soul. Mm-hmm. I don't say that to be trite. I ain't trying to like belittle somebody else's right, moment right, right. or or like make light of suffering in general. I'm saying that like everyone goes through a form of Ooh, it. That's true. But, but we have just been conditioned to ignore it or not engage it or not validate it for what it should be. Mm. In my opinion, if we would begin to be honest about what, what we feel and either celebrate or lament, what that is, we would be better prepared going into greater moments of suffering. Say that. If we would do the work in that moment. Right. To mm-hmm. sit and say, man, I'm I am upset. I am I am hurt. I am I am afraid right now. And I don't know what to do. Mm. 
and then take that to a, a brother or sister that cares for you. Yes. Take that to the Lord in prayer. Right. Take that to the bank itself. Like, I didn't know y'all did this type of thing. Help me. Yeah. Help. Can I do this and then give it back then? Right, or right, right, right. Help, please. Good. Right. Good. Like, be honest about it instead of sweeping it under the rug, right. calling it life and moving on. Ooh. But when the big moments, quote unquote, happen, now it's, yo, this is suffering. And I'm like, no, no, no. In my in my experience, in my perception of it all, um, and I've not read anything or looked at something scholarly to support it. I just feel it in my own experience. Yes, that's mm-hmm. what we want. We constantly live in the eye of the hurricane. Mm. That to me is what Earth is, mm. because we have an enemy who wishes to kill, steal, and destroy. Right. We don't live in a utopia where it's paradise in the garden and the snake is trying to sneak around the bottom and get around a little moment. Right, right. Like, I'm in foreign territory. Let me sneak around. (laughs) Right. It's his. Right. Mm -hmm. So much so that he offered it to the Messiah and said, you ain't got to go to the cross. I'll give you everything you see. You can have it all. Mm -hmm. You can have it all, which wasn't some flippant idea. He wasn't being cavalier. He could have done it. He could have given it. Right. (laughs) And I'm like, yo, we live in the eye of the storm and there is calm there. There is peace there. But when the storm shifts from time to time, we begin to go, where is this coming from? Mm. We don't we need to have the perspective that not in a in a in a negative or or darkened perspective without hope that we don't live protected by the Lord or in a place of safety. Right, right. But we are, in my opinion, the children of Israel constantly walking through the Red Sea. Mm. It's just split for us. Mm. Right. It's just split. Right. But in some moments, whether you look at the the typical idea of what who Job is, or you look at what Peter said to the saints, suffering will come at times. Right. We live in a world where that is a, a thing. That's just the reality. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. just the reality. So to deny it or downplay it until you can't physically or emotionally Ooh. does us all a disservice. That's powerful, brother. Um, so using that, I'll segue into this idea for us. Yeah. It's not so much that I believe myself or other people uh, somehow get better. Mm. I do think you can call it that and be fine. What I do believe that happens though is for whatever for whatever reason, you at some point have to choose to move forward or to stop. Mm. And and I stopped. I chose to stop. That's what made this so hard. Mm. It was already hard in and of itself. But then I chose to stop. I chose to stop and just play the role of Martha, cooking, cleaning, mm. sweeping, got serving, busy. just got busy. I'm going to do a bunch of things. I played the role of the person who wanted to escape. So I was like, you know what? I'm moving to Samoa. I'm going to go be with my dad. I'm just not going to be. I'm not going to be nothing no more. I'm just going to be over here hiding out. And that didn't make sense because family demands a level of normalcy. Yes, right. Right, right. Um, (laughs) But, but, yeah, daily. And so uh, that wouldn't make sense. So what I said I would do is I would just numb it away until I could get two years down the line. Mm. But you, you can't, you can't fully live and not be fully present. Like, it's Ooh. not possible. So the moments where I was legitimately getting high or yeah. hiding out drunk or, right, right. like, going and sneaking off. Like, I told my wife, I was like, I, I tried everything but cheating on you because yeah. I didn't want to be myself. Right. So I just wanted to hide and be somebody else. Yeah. And, and I didn't care. I didn't care who thought what. And so moving forward, I had to realize I, I'm... I, the only way to, to, to go through it is to go through it. Ooh. The only way to get over it is to go through it. Go I got to go through it. Going through it was terrifying, and I'm still going through it in, in different aspects of it. Right. That's the other thing I had to accept. This is my, just like the person who lost a limb, this is my life forever. Right. I, I don't now, get to go back. Now, I have to move off. I have to move, I have to move forward without my arm. Without my right. arm. Right. I just got to do it. Right. So I think, I always think about the, the scene of uh, Forrest Gump with Lieutenant Dan when he lost his legs. Yep. Mm-hmm. And he was in the, he was in the, are we, is this PG? What is this? What are we, what are we? You talk, you talk. Lieutenant Dan was in the bed pissed off because right. he ain't had no legs. Right. And he looked at Gump like. Get away from me, <laughs> man. Right, right, yeah. Like, he just I hate wanted you. To, I want to die. I, Everybody else died. I want to die right. like them. And you stole it, Why? You you stole stole it, it from, me. from me. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, God, I wanted my sons. I wanted to be 90 years old, laying in my bed with a candle lit room with all of them gathered around as I peacefully mm-hmm. transition into yeah. into glory, having mm-hmm. leaving this legacy. And you, st- you stole that from mm-hmm. me. I wanted it back. And so... 
you wow. you can't you can't deal with those things and not feel, but you gotta feel, you gotta mm -hmm. deal with them, and you gotta move forward. There is no magic bullet for that. That's powerful, mm -hmm. man. That's powerful. Um, I think in powerful. in retrospect, as I look at my time being around you from from when that happened to current day, I have had a front row seat looking at the ways in which God was sustaining you through everything. Even yep. in the dark, dark moments, yep. it was just yep. obvious to me that God was doing something in mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the Anderson household. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that I've appreciated, and I've, I've said this to you, I'm not saying this because we're on camera, I've said this to you, yeah. and I've said this to others, is it has seemed as, it seems as though your faith has gotten stronger. And I love the idea that we don't necessarily kind of shake it off and move on. I'm yes. always going to be missing my arm, mm -hmm. but God has gives me new normal grace. Hey, right? you know come what I'm saying? Yeah, right. come on. New normal grace. Walk heavy. Tap your navel and say I new, normal. Yeah. <laughs> new normal. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I love about what I see, in, what I hear in your music now, mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking like jumped out the whip, moving, moving forward. forward. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not that the stuff before wasn't stuff there was great, but I am appreciating a kind of freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, like, like, uh, and we were joking before we got on here that the the, the Tadashi that that I know, all of us are all recovering. We're all recovering, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you just feel it. Just the, the whole idea of. Um, uh, for example, your song "Be Me." Mm -hmm. uh, all I ever wanted was to be me. Yeah. And, and, and like, I, so I, I don't have to explain or justify myself. Like, my identity is what it is, and I lean into mm -hmm. it. I'm not mm -hmm. constantly editing myself. Right. I'm not mm -hmm. constantly trying to fit who I am. I'm just who God made me to be. I think right. God's ideas right. about me were good. Yeah, bro. <laughs> I just lean into <laughs> it. Right. right. He, he kind of like knew what he was doing. I think he kind of knew what he was doing. 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 You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And I feel like I'm experiencing a lot of that on Instagram with you. You are. Now, you I want to ask you, this is kind of transitioning a little bit. We just got a master class just now um, as we think about uh, wholeness and suffering and faith. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. I do want to transition into some conversation about Christian music industry. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just set this up by saying this. Come on. Christian artists have expectations Placed on them. They do. Right. Of they, course. Do. they do. There are certain things you are to be doing. Making songs about Jesus. Yes. All right. Yes. Hype. Preferably. Preferably. Uh, you know, you can Youth do. Youth group friendly. You know what I'm saying? Stuff yeah, that can play well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pizza night. Yes. yes. Summer, Wednesday. Yes. Summer camp. Probably in a suburban. Yeah, yeah. That would be the preference. Now, we will, we allow our artists. You can, you can do other stuff. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But the stuff that we're going to, like, Champion, like the stuff that's gonna go gold mm -hmm. or, or sell, mm -hmm. well, it has to be a certain a certain right, vibe. Right, yeah. Okay, right, right, right. Um, so there's that. There's certain things we don't want our Christian artists doing. Uh, for a while, we didn't want you making music with people that weren't Christians. Mm -hmm. If they weren't, now you had to say, well. These beats weren't made by pastors. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they were not. They were not. I hate to blow your bill, yeah, your yeah, butt. Yeah, 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 yeah. didn't produce yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wayne Grudem didn't. Let John Five didn't make Wayne these beats. Grudem. I mean, and I the guy it. that wrote "Help Me Write This Hook." This guy literally <laughs> walking to the studio oh, as high uh, as a kite. Alistair Bay and didn't do marijuana. Sense. That brother was high <laughs> on something else. And him and I sat down and we yeah, wrote this song. We wrote together. this song, <laughs> and it was it was phenomenal. Now, I shared the gospel with him. We prayed. I, did, I do want to let you know that I, I did challenged that. him. I challenged him. I gotta let you know that that happened. But a talent is a talent. I mean, when, when God was trying to, when he went to uh, ZipRecruiter.com to build the temple, gee, God did not say, make sure you wow. are religious. Wow. No. God was on ZipRecruiter.com. God with the ZipRecruiter said, I need I need a some temple. stone masons. Yes, he Who said. Who is going to? He said, I, I want skill, but I also want faith. Oh, so he didn't say that. He didn't say. He just said, if you're Bring good, I'm going to come on. No. <laughs> so anyways, no. Uh, no, I'm joking. But anyways, oh um, so they, 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 you know, some folks are like, well, you know, we we going to make music we make music with. The song itself is going to be about, you know, nothing terrible. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. kind of accepted that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so they allowed it. But there, one thing that, one expectation that there is no space for mm -hmm. for the Christian artist mm -hmm. is to be vocal about 
black stuff. Come on, my God. It's not just race. It's not just race. No, you can't. You can't just stuff specifically. Right. And you right? can't. And you can't. Yeah. Just be pro black, even of your, right, even, right, your right, even, right. even your own black. You're black. Right, right, right. Even right. you celebrating your blackness. No, 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 no. no. That that's not okay. Not even black. That's some arbitrary. But your own blackness. That's right. You celebrating like, no, that. No. Like, listen, bro. You're listen. sounding a little you're liberal. Because that's a what little the liberals talk like about. The Democrats. The Democrats. <laughs> Start Did you just to make sound that a up? little bit no, no, because that's a pejorative phrase that they use. That is. It is. The demon crap. Yeah, 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 that's another one. That's they have several. Oh. Demon crap. You can open an arsenal there, like, which one am I going to use? Dang. Which one will Demorats. work for this audience? Dang, man. <laughs> That is amazing. Yeah. Uh, and then, I don't know, part it should be. two of the, th of the thing that you are expected to never do. Yeah, never. Is to talk about social justice, oh, gosh. and 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 I, and I know social justice. I, I I made it distinct from black stuff because social justice is, obviously yeah. encases that, but it's yeah. all kinds of other things. It's holistic. It's kinds of I love how you talked about the environment. Sandy, yeah, Sandra, Sandra Richter. We talked about her a lot on yeah. this show. Dr. Sandra Richter, who will be on this show with us, Come on. is a Christian environmentalist. Yes, talks about eco theology. Get her on the she show. Bro, she, I was just telling you about get, her. We're having yes, ramen in Atlanta. Yes, get Dog, her. Like, like that's a social justice issue. Issue. And an God issue. makes it an issue in the in the word. That's right, in the scripture. Right, absolutely. Right. Come on. Mental health, you know, the, the, the issues of life in the womb, all of these things fall under yeah. that scope because yeah. God is a holistic God. Oh, y'all don't want to get me holistic preaching in here. Um, but uh, <laughs> but particularly within the social God justice, God wants the whole thing. God ain't just listen. He ain't just. <laughs> Clearly, y'all have done this together before. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Clearly, we gotta stop. Yeah. We'll take this off. Yeah, we'll get to take, hey, let me stop. Let me stop. No, uh, no, no. It was great. It was great. I was like, yo, that timing was perfect. Oh, wait. Hey. Clearly, y'all y'all do this. Y'all oh, do this. Listen. Crazy boy. God, listen. Oh, hey. Man, but there are certain things in the in the social justice ba basket. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Even the term social justice, even though if you have an ESV Bible, the translators, if you have any Bible, particularly the ESV, <laughs> though, which we love the ESV, if you have that Bible in your hand and you go to uh, uh, Exodus mm -hmm. and read about how God wanted his people to deal with each, uh, each other in the community, mm -hmm. the heading of the title, I'm not saying that's inspired, right. but the heading of the title is God's Laws on Social Justice. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, y'all better go and, and, fire everybody from Crossway. I know. Okay, where you at, Crossway? Oh, my goodness. I'm thinking about also <laughs> Tim, Tim Keller. Tim Keller. Yeah, Timothy, yeah. Dr. Timothy Keller. Timothy. Mm -hmm. Who, uh, in his book, Generous Justice, yeah, yeah. did a Hebrew translation right. of, uh, of, of a text in the Psalms, and it said that, and he translated it as, God is a lover of social justice. Yeah. So... The, the the whole the, the phrase itself is now in the basket, the social justice basket, and folks are like, "There's things you can't touch." You know what I'm saying? One of those things is being happy <laughs> about somebody getting elected. Come on, that might be pro-choice. Come on, yeah. now, come on, I, now, brother. Come on. Now I I understand that abortion is a massive issue for the Christian, and it should be, mm -hmm. okay? It absolutely should be with you with that 100%. However, I have sat with some people that I love with all my heart and talked through the works of Jonathan Edwards, who owned slaves, not as a simple man of his time, but as one who was developing theology, out of yeah. white supremacy yeah. right. and went around defending the institution mm -hmm. as a normative act of God yeah. against people who were telling him that it was wrong too. It Including his own son. Right. It Johnson wasn't Edwards Jr. Yeah. So he we, wasn't just living in the echo chamber. And we can understand that, but you cannot understand <laughs> why someone who not even if they, they themselves are committing abortions, but they think that women should have the right to commit a, a, an abortion, uh, that they are pro-choice, not necessarily pro-abortion. I'm not trying to sanitize the issue. I'm just saying you there's, there's some differences. All right. Mm -hmm. Studies have come out to mm -hmm. already show, yeah. that have shown emphatically that most Americans, even if they are pro-choice, are not smearing the blood yes. of, of aborted babies on their faces. Yes. The, that group of women that are, that are waving flags of 
give us babies to kill that's is very group, fringe right. in America. Right. I'm not saying it's like that everywhere, but in America, that's very fringe. Most people want to save the life of babies. Yeah. Deal with it. Mm-hmm. And, most, that's the and most most liberal people want contraception so that women don't actually have to make that choice. Right, right. That they which wouldn't make we that. can right, 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 understand right. why under their presidency abortions have been lower. But yeah, 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 right, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a whole different. But in the in the in that space. It, we exist as black people yeah. who live in communities who have almost always been socially conservative. Always, always. yeah. Never. There's. I understand that there that that the argument that's going to get thrown our way is well, man. Listen, you got uh, black babies are being aborted at higher rates than everybody else. Yeah, because yeah, black. Uh, well, black babies are also being uh, being conceived in families that are poorer, poorer than, than everybody, everybody else. Than right. Everybody else's. So it isn't that they're black that has happened. It's not a reflection of the cultural values. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's actually a reflection of the social economic right. issue that they find themselves in okay mm-hmm. and in the re- the reality is that those who are in better situations tend to lean away from that as an option now throughout yeah this is what we throughout say that, the so, throughout the racial I, spectrum as we say on the show all the time unless you get you better have some data or you better mm-hmm. have a bible verse or i'm not taking you serious and mm-hmm. we can give you either okay uh well, on this obviously data but with that being the case for the black community <clears throat> They have the black community has mainly stood against abortion. They've been socially conservative, but they've been politically liberal. Right. Okay, yeah, um, at least in in recent in recent history, that there has been support for individuals who they don't agree with on everything, mm-hmm. like these issues, but they've still been able to see the grace in a situation. Yes, yes, that concept is foreign. Yeah, bro. To yeah. our to, to many people who will find themselves consuming Christian music. Yeah, yeah. And for mm. a Christian artist to say something like, Congratulations to Joe Biden. Did it, brother, that doesn't even reflect how you feel about Joe right, Biden. Right. It just it, it, it reflects it, how you feel about the situation. Right, the reality. That's, that's it. About the situation or the office in which he hey holds. Right. Right. There's a difference. Right. So, Right. There is a a lack of discernment, brother, a sort of a, a in some ways the the arguments that were made about Christians in the 70s about us being very anti-intellectual that we reject the the, the critical thinking and our, our theories are uncritical that some of that starting to show it didn't go away, put it like that. Right. That we're not we, we are selective in where we want to do the heavy lifting of thinking. Ooh, come on, We're bro. selective. Mm-hmm. 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 And, 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 and when it comes to the culture war of the left versus the right, there is no nuance. Oh. There is no other way. There is no grace. And we are going to cancel you or put you aside if you begin to sort of, uh, um, if you begin to bleed the things that are outside of what we expect from you. Yes. So... What I Ooh. want to ask you? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Time out. I gotta. Yeah, for sure. Goodness. For sure. Hey, bro. So my 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 question for you is: mm. as you have unashamedly said, you 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 have you have just been you, brother. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You have been a Samoan, black, grown Christian father, businessman, mm-hmm. artist. Mm-hmm. And have not apologized for it mm-hmm, recently. Mm-hmm, lately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've seen on some of your posts where people go crazy on, on the comment section mm-hmm. and this brother is unbothered. Right. Mm-hmm. At, least, at least it seems that way because oh, no. you just keep it <laughs> and you're like, I'm just going to like, you know, delete this post no, now. No, right, right, right. No. So help me understand where are you with all of this, um, with the expectations of you as a Christian art yeah. artist and how do you kind of proceed in this sort of freeness that we seem to be sensing now. That's good. That's good. Mm-hmm. Very perceptive of you. <laughs> I, 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 I know you to be intellectual and intelligent and, you know, very well spoken, but but very perceptive of you. Uh, I appreciate that the fact that you noticed all of this. That, <laughs> it means a lot. I ain't gonna lie. For hey, you, bro, yes. I appreciate it, man. Uh, well, I mean, you know, I, I think it's obvious to everybody. I, uh, I hate white people and I hate babies. <laughs> I just... Oh, no, you did. Wait a minute. <laughs> 
I thought that was clear. I thought that was already <laughs> clear. I, 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 <laughs> just ask all my white I, friends, and they'll tell you. Like, he hates I us. Hate right, right, right. He's inviting us over for can dinner. I, can I do that? Is that a defense now? <laughs> I, got, I got a lot of white friends. Can I do my that? My best friend was white. My best friend. In elementary school. <laughs> Actually, oh, actually, man. actually was too. It actually was. For real? Oh, he was. He was. He wow. was. He was. High school, uh, junior, elementary, and high school. Junior high, not nice. so much. Nice, I was going nice. through some stuff in junior high. Yeah. Uh, nobody was friends with me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, sincerely, um, part of the reason for the shift, if you will, in tone and in um, presence when it comes to social media. Uh, let me let me address social media first, then address the other side of it. Social media is in my opinion, all about um, perspective and opinion. Mm -hmm. And you add to it a level of either bravado or clout chasing. Mm -hmm. That to me is what it is. It's yeah. it, there, there are aspects of sincerity on it, so I don't mm -hmm. want to belittle mm -hmm. people who come there with, with sincere hearts. But overall, I noticed the level of opinion and perspective that you get mm -hmm. leveraged to be fact or law. Mm -hmm. and, and in that, wow. once I learned that, because I started to realize I can't say certain things that so-and-so just said, who's also a Christian. That's interesting. Can't from the meaning from the way people respond in the comments, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. right. the way people um, uh, attend, uh, tend to leave or, or go right, right, quickly. Right, right. Um, I, I started to notice that more. And what I saw myself doing was the very same, same thing I was doing in junior high, the same thing I was doing in uh, college my freshman and sophomore year, the same thing I was doing when I first started doing music or was first on staff at a church. I was trying to perform for people to receive me and like me, period. Mm -hmm. So... There's a reason. It's not just that I care about lighting for my photo. I do it a certain way so that someone likes me more mm. or appreciates me more mm. or listens more. Hey, and so... Tread light, Bishop. <laughs> and so... Right, right, right. Tread so deep. so I just said to myself, like, there is a there is a truth of me that is being hidden, and I feel like I'm lying in the process. Mm. Right. And so I can't deny this anymore. Um, I didn't grow up being a Christian. I didn't grow up around tons of white people, though the, the, I grew up in a city where it was predominantly white. I didn't grow up in a way where I could just simply sit by and ignore what someone, not just forget race for a moment, what anybody was going through suffering or hurting wise. In a lot of ways, I'm the big dude from the blind side that Sandra Bullock rescued. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I'm like, wow. I want to protect you. I want to care for you. I want to nurture you. I want to make sure you're safe. If you, I, I'll walk you to your car in the dark, guy or girl, I'll, I'll open the door for you and make sure nothing's out there. Right. Let me go first. Let me, baby, I'll walk on the side of the street. You walk mm. by the other side. Like, I want to be that person and not even on some, I'm too chivalrous or too Christian to let it happen. I, it innately is what I think of first. Yeah. Yeah. And so when I see online the vitriol mm -hmm. and the hatred seemingly that comes at at people who speak about their own cultural or identity experiences, you tend to see silence from people mm -hmm. who otherwise would want to be their friend. Wow, wow. And I was like, yeah, I'm too protective and too loyal to deny my own truth of myself or the fact that I know this person for real and want to love on them wow. inside this space. Yeah. Um, so when those two things kind of merged, bro, I, I threw caution to the wind Oof. and I just ran. I was yeah. like, oh, let's do it. So the fir many, many first steps easing into it. But what I've learned is um, people want to, people want to use the idea of there is neither Greek nor Jew to, pacify you mm. into not speaking about race right. because God's gotten rid of the race now. Right. We're all one in Christ now. And so my issue with that, first and foremost, is uh, that is that is a horrible exegesis of the text. <laughs> not good uh, at all. Very at, terrible. Let's, I mean, not, let's horrible, not do that. <laughs> not good at all. And 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 even more so, more so, you don't apply the entire verse. I mean, right. you because, don't talk yeah. about gender. Right. 
You don't right, talk right, about right. slave. Right. You don't talk about freemen. When Paul himself in later in later books, later letters in, in the Bible, speak to the difference between slave right. and right, master. Right, 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 right. He gives distinction between the two and roles for each one to play. Right. So how can we let Paul, who also said we're all one and the same now, do that? It's because we have created this misnomer in the body that we're one and in, in the same. Mm -hmm. One oneness is not equal sameness. Right. Mm. It does not. Right. If if my sons come in this room, they're all one family. They're right, right, right. Anderson boys. Right. right. But they're not the same individual. Right, right. right. They have individual names right, right. to differentiate the, the fact and accentuate the fact they aren't the same person. Right. right, right. right. So when, when I when I learn for myself, I can't let them pacify me on this horrible idea of how to how to apply the text, let alone in some way silence me for their own comfort. Mm. And then I recognize Satan uses shame as a, a, a weapon more than anyone else. Yep. Or, like It is him who uses shame. It, it, I can only imagine the type of shame Eve felt to be told, you're not doing all you could do for mm, God. Mm, mm, mm. He does. He knows what you would become. Right, 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 you right. don't want to be that? Right. Like, right. I could feel the shame of yeah, that. And sure. I'm like, yo, man, this is, this is what you're doing right now is shaming me into silence with the... Um, with the, you know, to, to use the term a different way, the silver bullet for an argument of abortion. Right. When you so eloquently just yeah. made the point, it is not as a black and black and white of an right, issue right, as right, we right. try to make it to right, be, right, right. let alone the fact in the political sphere alone, forget the spiritual for a moment, political alone, everyone is fighting against the idea of abortion when I have not seen Anywhere in all the years that I've been a believer or before, I've not seen anywhere a legitimate plan put in place to replace or in some way engage a community of people, not just black women, but people, women in general, who say, I want to abort my child. Right. Right. Where is your plan now right, right. to replace the one that's there besides yelling at them and shaming right. them right. to not want to do the thing that you say is sin? Right. right. Yes, I I say it all. I said it on social media. I said anywhere. Right. I I am totally pro life. Right. right like right. I am like I, as one who's lost a child. I'm like don't 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 <laughs> it, don't kill exactly. the baby. Yeah. Don't kill the baby. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. we can do something different for right. you. Right. But when it comes to doing something different, the only answer that I've seen is political fighting or or oh, social media yeah, fighting. Yes. But no plan of action right. to to help bring them to a place to where the child can be brought into the world right. and put in a position of 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 actual value and and life we we push ad adoption in that moment or foster care in that moment without ever having engaged right. the adoption right. process or the right. foster community right. foster child community none of that makes sense unless you really get into it so being one like my wife yeah. actually danielle shout out to wonder woman wonder um, woman <laughs> she just became a doula so oh, she's, okay. wow. she's also she's helped deliver she's helped with the deliveries of three different babies already. Uh -huh. So she is the first person who ever kind of educated me on this idea of how statistically as well as experientially for her, how black women are treated when they see the doctor, oh. how, how they, they are belittled or seen as less uh. than or treated like their pain levels are not accurate. And I have maybe, a personal story about data that. and facts yep. behind everything he just yes. said. Do you just Google Come on. Google? Black women in the medical uh, yes. uh, and, and hospital. Just yeah. put those words together yeah. and read all the studies. Yeah, bro. All the and studies. we talked yes. about it on the podcast. Yeah, we talked about my wife almost Serena died Williams. because of that. Yes, yeah. bro. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes, Had to get rushed to emergency surgery because we were telling this doctor for months that she was in pain in there. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you said it wasn't until Dave and, and Mary. Was that the difference maker, Dave and Mary? That was the difference maker. We have a white couple at our church that came and advocated for us at the hospital, wow. and it made yeah. all of the you difference. See this? Yeah. yeah, it yeah, made bro. all of the difference. Yeah. And, and it's 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 one of those moments where you have to take into account the fact that unless you're willing to become the thing that you don't want to become because you know that will feed the stereotype, it will result in, in tragedy right so I, like one of my friends i have two different friends in mind who the guy had to get i mean he had to get thuggish with dude and like get in his face put his hand on his on his shoulder like you're gonna do what we told you to do yeah. or you're gonna stop and bring somebody else in right 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 those period are, those, are your those are your yeah. options yeah. right yeah. now right i don't care who you work for right this your option right mm -hmm. now and my man in fear did what he said and then later the second opinion was like yo she had minutes 
And it was Woo! just like, it was like, yo, what are you yeah, doing? Right. So Serena Williams, it, it, same, yeah. same. They, the yes. studies show that uh, your influence, education, or economic level is meaningless. It doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. Serena it's, Williams, the exact same situation, right. hemorrhaging, saying, I'm in pain, I'm in pain, yeah. something's wrong. Having Doctor a pulmonary is waving it off. Right. His, her, her husband literally grabbed the doctor and said, you need to take a CAT scan, yeah, yeah, forced right, it, right. Right. and found that she was minutes away from dying. Right. Yeah. It, it happens all the time. The numbers of black women dying in birth yeah, bro. in this country yeah. actually mirror some of the co- the numbers that you see in third world countries. Yeah. Third world countries. It's crazy. It's yeah. staggering, bro. It's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's mystifying. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I know one firsthand wife who is a doula, wife who had four boys naturally and has been pregnant six times, dealt with miscarriages, walked alongside of women who have dealt with, who have lived every every horror you could live when it came to to being pregnant. Even friends who have uh, sisters that have endometriosis mm-hmm. and the pain right. that comes from that mm-hmm. that gets dismissed because ah right. oh, you know you just you just got to be tougher. Oh, it's mm-hmm. not that bad. The level's not that bad. It's like I I know. There is a legitimate, actually, one of the, one, I keep thinking of people, bro, like, one of my homegirls we went to church with, one of the ladies, my, my wife discipled, um, white sister, worked in the NICU in Dallas at, uh, at uh, the Dallas, uh, the Children's Hospital, mm-hmm. and and would speak to the idea of how babies are born premature, right. babies, uh, babies have had to be uh, delivered through traumatic ordeals and left in an incubator and so on and so on. Mm. So we've seen, talked to professionals, dealt with a lot of different people to try to get, again, the real world experience to go with the stats and data to say, no, there is a heart that needs to be had when it comes to pregnant mothers and, and babies being born into this world. But what what should not happen is you become a stat in the level of of the fact that you only are there to 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 win an argument for somebody's mm, right. position politically right. Right. when when ideally politically you have to rally the faction to to bring them into an a same mentality to get your thing achieved as wow. a politician right. so it's it's a great rallying cry wow. i remember 6 years ago 5 or really 5 years ago now um, when, or no, it was only four. Biden just got in office. Four years ago, two predominant, I mean, two prominent um, white mega churches in Dallas, Texas, from the pulpit saying, for the sake of our grandchildren, vote Republican. And it was like, huh? one, you're a 501c3. You just can't say yeah, right. this who you should vote <laughs> you know for. You know that's right. Exactly. You're uh, not supposed to do that. But right. two, this this who grandchildren are you thinking of right now right. Wow. and and what what policies are you considering in Sad. the moment because yeah. you wasn't thinking about the the Mexican children being being trying to immigrate into the country yes. who, or the Mexican mothers who are pregnant mm-hmm. you weren't thinking about think people about that. you weren't thinking about people who had to go from Cabrini Green because they got gentrified over to the South Side right. and yeah. smashed into one place right. in yeah. Chicago whose children whose, whose grandchildren, children right. whose grandchildren are you thinking of and so I I had to ask the question legitimately they didn't have an answer for it. And we had a dialogue where we were then said, uh, we just will di- we just choose to agree to disagree. And I'm like, OK, so in a real world on the ground level with this issue that you bring up, we can choose to agree to disagree. But in a political sphere, there is no backing down. Wow. We right. will fight. And right. so I just had to learn, man, there is a level uh, to social media that is opinion and perspective in politics. It's it's pageantry and, uh, you know, a, a level of pomp and circumstance Mm -hmm. and then in in the idea of who I was as a person I wasn't going to let a misuse of a text or the misideals of the plight of black people in America or the even the anxiety or tension people feel when dealing with it to be ignored in Mm. the process because because even when I deal with that when you talked about social issues my heart grew my heart became more compassionate and I started to care, okay, what's going on in Samoa? What, what do right. I need to care about there? Yeah. You know what? I need to look over here at Napoli right now. Like in last week alone, bro, mm-hmm. there were there were 12 different countries having protests, some of them 15 in one week, mm. that we are oblivious to right. as Americans. No exactly. No idea, but their livelihood is on the line. Right. And we either dismiss it because oh, they don't know Jesus and they need to know Jesus. Right. That's their fault. That's sin. And just flippantly, arrogantly dismiss right. it. Or we don't know about it because we, in a different arrogance, Think our world to be the world. America is the world. That's why I said America is. Yeah. Think our world to be the world. Think our world to be the world. America is the world, and 
Um, it's good, T. Dot. It is. It is good. Mm-hmm. I think that I love that you said that politics a lot of the times is pageantry mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because that's exactly what that's it is, power. and we get sucked. Yeah, we get, and, and I think that we get sucked into it. And a lot of times, what we don't recognize, I think, is. The evangelicalism in which we're taught is also pageantry. Yes, some of our yes. doctrinal positions is yes, pageantry. Yes. Some of our, even when we're talking about, oh, pro-life abortion, some of those arguments are also pageantry. Yeah. And you point that out because, as you said, you can say pro-life, pro-life, pro-life all day, but none of you guys are volunteering at none of these pregnancy centers. Mm-hmm. You have no ministries in your church that are geared Dedicated towards abortion to- or the women in the inner city that are that are getting abortions um, or providing them with any kind of resources. The only way in which you guys think that you're doing something about abortion and we've said that before is by voting at the booth which is nothing it costs you nothing you don't get any dirt under your fingernails by casting a vote at the booth you don't sacrifice any time you're not inconvenienced none of that that you're none of that is anything that you're doing when it comes to the booth and but but you guys are so passionate about abortion being stopped yet you're you're passion regarding abortion is just simply platitudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Now think about this. Think wow. about me, good, me meeting you mm-hmm. and I, I meet you. This is just for the sake of the right, right. for the for the example <laughs> at all because you're you're a very well manicured and 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 and, and sm- clean smelling brother. <laughs> so let me let me let me, let me, right. let me do let me do it. so if I if I meet you, mm-hmm. engage you and then I go, mm, how do I tell him he, he needs to put on deodorant? Mm-hmm. Like how do I tell him that? Right. I don't want to offend him. How do I tell him? And now if I'm in, I'm an extremist and I care so much about people's sense and body odor, I'm just gonna yell at you and be like, "Yo, my God, my right. God, yeah. deodorant, bro. <laughs> bro you heard you, of you, it you heard, here, right? right. <laughs> we have it ready for you right. here. Right. I can I can do any one of those number of those things, but I just met you, mm-hmm. and I'm going to come and speak to you about a personal, seemingly private matter, mm-hmm. which is levels beneath the idea of talking to someone about pregnancy and right. their, their child and their body. Right. But I'm going to do that to you. We we don't do that to anybody. Mm-hmm. We are nervous. We talk about my honey back a little bit. We, we'll mm-hmm. move on. We'll do whatever. Right. Right. We don't deal with those things. But for some reason now, because of your political position or your, um, it, your ideas about the faith, you will in an extreme way, go at people you've never met or don't want a relationship with right. to talk to them about relational things right. like this. I, I wonder, because I think it, it, the question becomes, are you actually trying to persuade them not to do it? Right. Yeah. And it's, a lot of times it's or not. Or yeah. are you just signaling to your your sort of conviction? Like, this is where we are, and, right. I, and, and this is our team. It's more and, like right. a gang, yeah, I was about to squad, say. And, right. yeah. squad goal. That's yeah, why yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah, the time yeah. it's not actually persuasion. That's why it's very hypocritical that they they, that a lot of folks always are condemning the left for virtue signaling mm. because because evangelicals virtue signal too. Sure, mm-hmm. sure. You are not saying what you're saying about abortion to hold me. On. Hold on, hold on. I was gonna say you're not saying. I'm gonna say that as a Christian rapper. You know, earlier in my career, I virtue signal. No, yeah, I'm saying. Yes, because yes, what evangelicalism yes. teaches us to virtue Sprinkling virtues. these things yeah, in so be, I can be accepted. Because accepted. Christianity the theological. The Christianity of the land teaches you to virtue signal. Right. It's a game. Can I just let say. Me, I, I have to. It's just like in my blood. I got to I got to wave the blood. blood. I got to let you know. It's, you know what I'm saying? Even, even, even when your blood 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 unnecessarily. Even, no, it's, it, it, even when your blood unnecessarily. <laughs> but also, even if you're in crypt territory and you flagging blood is going to make you lose your life. Mm. And it's unwise. Right, right, right. I'm blood. What's up? Right, right, right. I'm out right. here by myself. It's 12 of y'all. Right, right. But I, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm so a part of the tribe that I'm willing to die for the tribe. Right. And, 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 and you're not really, it's not really about the gospel then. Right. That's the thing. That's why it's so dangerous because what happens is that you use, um, you use biblical ideology and the truths of Jesus essentially as a means to an ends, which is just representing your game. Mm. It has nothing to do with the glory of God. It's representing Because the glory team. of God would be willing to say, bro, I don't have to blast you and say that you need deodorant like have you ever heard of it right now? Because the goal is to persuade you. Yes, yes. So it's not to blast you, but tribes, the goal, of, the goals of gang, tribal mentality, it's not persuasion. It's to kill you. It will, and, it's and defeat it's, and, and the, shame. And, and the motivation behind that, and we see it in scripture in the book of James, which is why I think we feel it on social media so mm-hmm, much. Mm-hmm. Your goal wasn't to engage me for the sake of love or persuasion. 
equation. Your goal was to to bash me, to shame me, That's to it. ridicule me right. in the process. And now when I disagree with that idea of either your approach mm-hmm. or your opinion, there is quarreling among us because right. you're not getting your way. You want what you want when you want it. And if you can't get it, yep. right. then you'll kill to get it. Right. right. You'll right. defame right. to get it. Right. You'll right. maim to get it. It does not matter. Right. And so I found myself saying, this is the game that I see most prevalent. Mm. Not the game that should be, but it's a game that, that's most prevalent. So God, how will I use my voice in this season and time to make sure, one, someone who looks like me that came from where I came from w- will have representation. Amen. But secondly, so that I can love, I, I want people to know that. I am trying to love on you, person that disagrees with me. I am not here entering. I don't troll people. Right. I ain't about that life. Right. I got kids. I got time to come troll <laughs> you. Right, women. right. <laughs> that 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 speaks to a level of arrogance on your part to think you deserve or you somehow warranted from me me to do that to you. Right. Or it just speaks to how low you think of me because you like, oh yeah, he out here trolling me. I'm like, no, none of those are the case. <laughs> right. I got real life issues going on. Right. And in the process of it, I want this social media platform to have a level of integrity and substance to it that goes beyond the trite, right. hey man, let's just deal with whatever and make fun of and talk about this and rally the cohort and we gonna say this or that and then we feel good about ourselves. I'm like, no, I'm, I don't do that anymore. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What I am gonna do though, is talk about the the uh, the riots in Amsterdam because of the low wages. Yeah. I'm going to talk about the riots in Napoli because of the coronavirus right. shutdown. I'm going to talk about the riots, or at least the protesting. It wasn't really a riot, but the protesting in Delhi yep. because mm-hmm. of the farmer strike. I'm going to mm-hmm. talk about all these different issues along with the plights that I see in America sure. for black and brown people because I recognize there is a legitimacy to embodying this for someone who looks like me Amen. as well as loving on someone who doesn't look like me who is blind blinded currently by their own allegiance to the tribe Mm -hmm. or by their own fear of moving beyond what the tribe says you can do, which goes back to the idea of as a Christian artist, I no longer am going, I remember as a Christian artist, I'm no longer going to fit into your box. I'm going to break out of that now. Mm -hmm. I remember when it was taboo to do any, do a song about any other thing except the gospel being preached. When Sho Baraka did uh, We Can Be More and it was a song to his wife. Right. I was like, uh, what is boy, they about to, they about to get rid of you. <laughs> yeah, they about boy. to get rid of you. Yeah. And then um, the 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 anointed saint of Lecrae does one, and everybody's like, man, I'm a goat, man. Bro. What's up? You killed it, cause damn. And it's like, yo, show. I know uh, you was a pro- pioneer, yeah. but you had to take that heat, bro, cause right, right, cats right. were scared to come he out and be like, official lamb. He ain't say Jesus same one time. He ain't say, eh, bro. Same and that, and that show, you can stretch that show, show Baraka argument. Oh, it even goes further. You yeah. had a whole, oh, very whole much so. Project, racial that issues. Just yeah, seemed everything. To be not, you know, unable to to kind of fit within if you're thinking about things strictly in terms of the market. Yeah. Right. If you're thinking about what are what are these what is this group of people going to pay for? And someone's doing something outside of that, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. then the simple it's simple dollars and cents at that point. Right. right. But when it comes down to especially for the artist who is not only trying to liberate in my opinion I am trying to liberate people that I'm that I'm making music for. I am. I, I want them to have an experience. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. But I do think that the genuine artist is also kind of liberating himself. Yes. Ooh, you yes. have a burden that 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 keeps you up at night. Yes. Mm-hmm. That you that that you have to expose. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. have to be a part of mm-hmm, what is making mm-hmm. right, what is wrong. To not do that would crush me. Yeah, bro. Mm-hmm. And yeah. let me tell you. Come on. What you'll find in the Christian music industry is individuals who have been been drinking down, smoking down, or ignoring the burdens of their heart and who they are for so long that they don't know who they are. Come on. They'll look in the mirror and be confused. Right. Yeah. They yeah. literally, you literally are a shell standing in front of all these people. They have no idea that you don't mean a single word you're saying. Yeah, yeah. And then I, let me, I, I want to bridge the two real quick yeah. from yeah. what you just said. Yeah. So Tadashi, who lost a son, spiraled, went into darkness. Tadashi, who does Christian music, mm-hmm. is on stages. I'm... Uh, virtue signaling and I'm talking to my cohort and I'm making sure the core understands who I am and where I come from. The core. Uh, yeah, the, the core. core. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm here 
in both of these places, looking at both of these individuals and, and recognizing none of them mm -hmm. for who I really am. Right. And I'm like, man, I've put forward not in an in an intentional, you know, malicious way, but I've put forward ideas of myself that are partly true. The reality of it is I would definitely say congratulations to to Kamala Harris for winning vice president. I would definitely congratulate Raphael Warnock, who is the first black man to be voted to the Senate out of the state of Georgia. I would definitely congratulate anybody who's the first black person to do anything right. at that moment. Even Carter G. Woodson said the reason we have Black History Week Now Month is so we can fight against the narrative that black people have not contributed anything to this country. Exactly. And the people who argue and fight now and say, no, you, you, you're just supporting a baby killer, so forth and so on, are the same people who have children who will say in 30 years, look what we've done as America putting a woman at vice president. Right. And so, and oh, by the way, she's a minority woman. I, uh, so I'm not, I'm not going to get caught up in that trap sure. of, of believing for a moment that I have to fit into that box. I'm going to think outside of the box, pun yeah. intended, I guess, but I'm going to move forward outside of that and say, where, where, oh God, are you now wanting me to lend my voice? I, mm. I think that's powerful. I think that that's a, a very, very, uh, needed perspective, brother, because, um, I, we talked about on this show before how it's not that people don't have the ability to discern. Mm -hmm. It's not that 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 it's it's impossible for me to see you as anything else besides a baby killer. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know how to make discerning decisions when you like the guy. You do it all yes. the time. Because we talked yes. about that. I said, man, listen. They did this it for is a not, candidate 2016. We, that's what I'll say. I mean, we, we, you, you can bring Donald Trump <laughs> in, into the, the scenario. And, and with, listen, if you love Donald Trump, we, we are, we're not here trying to bash you. Yeah. I'm just but simply I'm just saying, saying you got, if you yeah. love Jesus and you love Donald Trump, then I'm assuming that you're making a lot of concessions in how you can be okay. And We've I know that it's like, well, you know, I don't like the language, stuff like that. But what about about the homosexual thing. Remember yeah. the whole the homosexual thing was like y'all the, the, oh, the, the biggest issue for for evangelicals going yeah. into to the voter vote yeah. you know gay gay marriage and stuff yeah. like that. But then Donald Trump has been described as the most pro gay marriage most pro gay president yes. that has ever been in the White and House. And people mm -hmm. in his administration have said so. That's right. Including he, Kaylee McEnany he, and other other people in his there administration. You go. Yeah. And that uh, they have testified that that is what he has been. Absolutely. I mean, he appointed more gay judges than any other president, more gay cabinet members than mm -hmm. any other. But you're able to take all that and discern it <laughs> from the man. Yeah. Let me tell you this. Yeah. Let me tell you this. In, mm -hmm. in terms of, I know the Warnock thing was very controversial mm -hmm. because your dude from Turning Point USA Charlie went Kirk. out and, yeah. Um, yeah. and I don't... And it's, Charlie Kirk went out and tried to cancel Lecrae. He did. Yeah, Mr. He did. Mr. He did. Mr. I don't I don't like cancel culture tried to cancel <laughs> tried Lecrae. To cancel. He, did. he did. He did. He tried Completely to Completely forgetting a, that a, evangelicals a created cancel culture. Right, 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 right. Like, <laughs> put the man tried to put out an edict created. on... Um, <laughs> he was edict. telling people not to... Yeah. But let me say, let me say this. <laughs> I don't know much about what Lecrae... Oh. I don't know much about what Lecrae did with, with Warnock mm -hmm, or, or mm -hmm. what he said or didn't mm -hmm. do or campaign. Same thing with Stacey Abrams. I don't know. I don't know what, what Cray's doing with all that. I don't know what he did. So what I can speak to is what I, what Tadashi just said. I was working on a project with my son two weeks ago. All right. He had to do a presentation for Black History Month. His school takes Black History Month very serious. I have never, that's amazing. ever, I mean. It's new to you. It's crazy. When I read in the curriculum that they use, it's so diverse. Uh, he, it, was a, it was like a, a math problem, and it said, if Jamal has $5 in it, I'm like, and Daquan took No, no, no. <laughs> Daquan was in one no, of the things. I'm not joking. joking. There was a Daquan and a Lakeisha, bro. Oh, I'm not joking. Yes. I I was, I've, I've been fasting from Instagram. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but uh, I almost posted it. Like, yo, what is... When I went to, back in my day, yeah, bro, boy, everybody was Charlie, that. Bill, Bob, <laughs> Susan, Jennifer. So his school is really trying to lean into okay. the diversity. Let's Anyways, go. Let's go. Uh, he's doing this. Um, he's you doing, didn't tell me that the quad was in there before. I forgot, I forgot, I totally forgot about it. I'm, I'm reading his, his, uh, his, his paper. I'm like, yo, they're doing this on purpose. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Bro. So anyways, um, he, uh, he's learning about Martin Luther King. And I'm and I'm explaining to him about what Martin Luther King was fighting for and mm -hmm. stuff like that for his presentation. And this man looked me in the in the face, KBJ looked me in the face, and as sincere as ever, 
said, man, it's hard to be black. Hold up. That's mm-hmm. just the first. Right. As we continued to talk, he asked me this. He said, why did God make us black? Because mm. it feels like mm. that seems to be a disadvantage. It, yeah. Are there stories of black people just going and doing things and being great, but it's not just them having to over- overcome something? It's having to push back <laughs> right. against hate. Can they just invent something and it be good for everyone? Just or like assume some place of leadership? Climb a and- mountain without having to fight the level balls That's first? That's right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> can, can they, <laughs> without having to defeat like, the ogre with eight heads? That's right. And I can, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like in the crudes, oh, anyone watch the crudes, the, the, the joints, where they, every time they go to get something to eat, it's like they have to sort of, they almost die yep, every time. Every time, Can you bro. just go to the store and come home? Is that possible? You know what I'm saying? Yo. Right. And in that right. moment, it became important to me for him to have images. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Even though he can't understand the complexities, complexities right. of those images. Right, right. But to have images of people that look like him really sort of expressing the image of God we say that's on him. Mm -hmm. The dignity and the value that he has, that there are people who have assumed positions, right, in which that dignity and value is being recognized. Right. It doesn't have to be explained away or justified or overcoming something. It's just there. there. Right. Look at it. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Those images are important. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. That's a, and for, uh, for us as parents, we obviously want to mature that into something deeper than just an image. Mm-hmm. But I'll tell you, growing up in Southside St. Petersburg, one of the single most impactful things on my life was watching my uncle Julius Mosley start a motel from scratch and yeah, buy bro. real estate all over the city. And, from, and that yeah. Lamborghini that he bought. From the outside looking in when I didn't know he was your uncle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I used to see him ride down 18th. Avenue yes. in that Lamborghini yeah. we used to be like bro it's a black who man in Lamborghini this? I mean, every, I remember yeah. we used to just be in the hood, like right, right, right. running the streets and be like, "Yo, who's that dude? Yeah, oh, he got a Lamborghini now. Right, oh, he got a Porsche now. Oh, he right, got a." Right, right, right. And that's we used amazing. to just be like, "That's crazy!" Like we just didn't. And on the, and I think it was important. I would look down. Look, you would look outside, on outside of that, looking in. You'd be like, "Well, look, what is this? Is this excess? Mm-hmm. He's got Ferraris mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. and Lamborghinis and 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 Porsches. He's yeah. switching them out every yeah, year. Just that, material, that, material, that, that kind of yeah. thing. Like, man, what what is he doing? There they go again, doing the the whole buying like, the Cadillac to the state. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the Buying the Cadillac to the state with the, uh, <laughs> and a pack of Newports with the upside down Nike check on the bottom. Never understood that. <laughs> so I, 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 I standing outside. Yeah. Everybody standing outside with some cigarettes. <laughs> Hey boy, tell your mama I'll be over there later. Hey, hey, tell your mama I'll be over there later. Tell your mama you want one nephew? You good? You good? Tell your mama I'll be over there later. Tell your mama I'll be over there later to get her. Pop out the grill, put a little chicken on the grill. But anyways, on the outside looking in, it's like you can almost look at that and be like, man, what, what is he doing there? But let me tell you what he did for us and for everyone on our blocks. He showed us it was possible, possible. to do something be successful successful at it and that thing is not rapping and basketball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what he did. Let me let me give you an example cuz I I 1000% agree cuz mm-hmm. cuz my son did the same thing. Two of them did the same thing. Wow. One my 5-year-old who is now 7 at the time was he said, "Man, why don't black people have lives like white people here. And when he said it, it was based on the book that my wife was reading with him, uh, just talking about black history. Right. And, she, and she had to explain the history of black people in this country to an extent. But over time, it was just like in his brain, what you said, can it all just be even and we all do one thing <laughs> right, and that right. one thing yeah. be just as good as that other person's thing? Right, right, and right. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> but 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 what, what you just said, uh, in, in the idea of representation, I knew that was important for them in a, in a huge way. Um, growing up in Texas, there were a lot of people who had money. And, and, and in Texas, which probably may be similar to Florida, uh, but in Texas, where the housing market is concerned, I can get a lot of house for what I would pay for Cali, Heck a house yeah. in Cali, or right. a house on the Absolutely. Northeast. Absolutely. I can get a lot of house, a lot of land. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm like, yo, to see somebody with a big house was always impressive. Right, right. But 
it didn't seem real in life. Mm. So on a field trip one day, one teacher from my school, he's in elementary school, took us to a guy's house outside of Houston who used to play ball in the NFL, and he had a, he had a mansion. And he, and he just wanted to have a, a day with the kids at the house. And so two classes went like in rotation. He did like a, a, a field day, that's what you call it, and uh, the, the blow-up, jump houses and all this stuff, cotton candy, the whole nine. But I just remember walking into this house that was a mansion, and I was like, this is not just on TV. This is in real, real life. Right. This is in real life. Even though I had that experience to know this mansion existed in real life, I still went back to my community where it was trailer house, rundown house, brick house that was like 70 years old, and then my house that was a rent house by the people who owned it next door mm. that was a two-bedroom, 800-square-foot home with window units for AC that one would fall out and we have to fix every, uh-huh. every winter. Uh-huh. And I'm like... I'm a far cry from that. Uh-huh. I know it exists now, but I'm still a far cry from that. It it meant much more in my own brain and psyche to my first experience ever doing music. Me and Lecrae went to Kansas City, and there was an architect that lived in the city, and we walked into his house, and he was a black millionaire, first one I ever met. Wow. And he had a house with an elevator, a mansion. And I was like, black people can have this too? <laughs> Black right. people can have they this handing these out. They, 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 <laughs> they gonna let us in there. They, they letting us get these. Like that was. <laughs> they should have never gave this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah right. But that was where my mentality I'm was. Joking. Where I was like, man, I can't believe this is real for black people too. Right. But I think in my teacher's mind, she assumed exposing them to this period will give them a level of like aspiration and uh-huh, a level uh-huh. of belief uh-huh. and I'm not saying it didn't add to some to some, to some extent but the 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 ripple effect of seeing a black man with it oh. as one who is black mattered so much more and just that yeah. I mean, you don't have to get into all the nuance no, right, none of right. It. None just, of it. just that alone alone seeing is becoming man if, it's if, if, you, is. if yeah. you can't see it yeah. right. if I have no vision yeah. of what the future might be mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. that has tremendous crippling effects yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. on the psyche and the soul and the yeah. statistic that I would leverage for the sake of proving that is in this country more families more, more children get degrees and even degrees sometimes higher than their than their parents when someone in, in the house went to college yeah, and graduated. Uh-huh. 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 Like, yep. like I, I know for a fact there are people right now with PhDs because they have parents with master's degrees. Right, right, right. right. And, and I'm like, okay, my wife has an electrical engineering degree. I have a degree, a, a dual degree in anthropology and sociology, and I'm mm. minor in communications. Mm. I, I want my kids to know this. Uh-huh. But there's a part of it at times where you feel like you can't, tout or boast in your own successes in that regard when in actuality people need to see and know that right much, right right need to know that we right. were sitting with my homeboy one day and we was talking uh my dude bj yeah. we yeah. were sitting talking with bj and he said something 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 and and one of the dudes was like yo i forgot you had a master's degree yo i didn't even think about that you should talk about that more right and he was like yeah i should talk about that more but probably should yeah but right. it just it just goes you know, we we forget how rare it is in this country, percentage wise, for people to get bachelor's period. Right. Let alone the stats for a black man or woman to have a, a college degree in this country. And when you look at those, you recognize the rarity of it and how much more special it is, and what you should celebrate and make much of. So, in light of that, I'm like, yeah, the the stats of seeing black men and women affluent in my world where I come from. Or little to none. But what is true is once I saw it, I knew that it was possible. Right. In every way. I was like, okay, I don't necessarily now want what you have. I'm not trying to all of a sudden become greedy or jealous. Uh What I am, though, is inspired. Right. And there's a level of belief that came along with it. So for my son now, or my boys who I talk to, I'm like, okay, mom and daddy have degrees. You can get whatever degree you want, brother. Right. Right. Mom and daddy. Uh, like daddy grew up in an 800 square foot home mm. and now I live in a 3000 square foot right, home. Right, right. Mom, it, you can do that if right, you so right. choose. Facts. That's possible in right, your right. life. Right. Th- there isn't this old oh, baby for them. Yes. Uh, it's, it's a reality in yes, a lot of ways. Right. And so that, that to me is where I go, I am going to be an embodiment or a representation of the very thing that I want other people to see that 
that they wouldn't otherwise know about. Say that. Right. And so that's why that's that is one of the motivations on why we volunteer at the school around the corner. That is one of the motivations why I work with Peace Preparatory Academy. Yeah. That is one of the motivations behind why I'm I'm like trying to be more visible with certain communities with uh, my homeboy has a nonprofit called be, be compelled where it's about sports. And another dude I know is doing stuff called his voice global mm. and he's got uh, orphanages in I South Sudan yeah, and yeah, yeah, other places. That. I'm yeah. like, I want them to see, like, I don't necessarily think I'm like, bro, I walked around Times Square and asked people who if they knew my name and no and and just on a joke with Lecrae. We was I was like, you ever heard of Lecrae? They was like, no. You ever heard of uh, we said we, you ever heard of KB? No. You ever heard of Triple E? No. You heard of Tadashi? No. We not famous, bro. <laughs> Never get prideful. Never get arrogant. You ain't you. You are not Justin Bieber. Just let it go. Right. Right. You can go to the mall and be normal. You ain't got to worry about nobody bothering right, right, you. Right. Yeah, yeah, you ain't got no. You got to put no hood yeah, on. No, keep, it low. keep the shade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't know what, they don't know you ain't got to do all that. They don't you, know what it means. You are not that person. So go <laughs> and and live. Right. But in that, bro, I was just like, man, let me be as much of a representation of that as I can. And what has been a joy on social media has been seeing the comments from certain people, younger, black and white, doesn't matter, but just younger, who are like, man, thank you for using your voice for something that matters. Mm -hmm. Like one dude hit me up and he was like, man, I didn't even know um, there was protests going on in India. I had no mm. clue. I, I got to go learn about this now. Right. And I'm like, yo, this is great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Bring awareness. Right. Let him grow in his own way what the Lord will convict and bring. Exactly. And if nothing else now, he may love on an Indian brother or sister that lives in another neighborhood or is at the store or whatever. Right. Because now you've engaged their world and they're not, you're not blind to them. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Bro. That's yeah. powerful, man. Yeah. It's powerful. It is. Um, Tadashi, thank you so much. Yes. Are we um, done? What is it? Your brother, yes, man. We, <laughs> I'm sorry. We got I, a master class. I, I enjoy it. Uh, I enjoy time yeah, with y'all, This was great. so good, no, this man. This was amazing. So good. I, um, um, T -Dot, also, we just we don't want to get off by not preparing our tribe. T Tadashi has uh, a new podcast. Yes. Uh, yes. That yes. is... Uh, that is on, on on its way. On its way, bro. I yeah. got three episodes in the can. In the can. I got. I got, I'm working on two all more. Of that, all of that. But in full. Right. 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 Full. <laughs> and then on top of that, man. So I'm doing a couple things that I want people to be aware of because of again, I, I one of the biggest things on my heart after forming Chase Wellness yeah. has been legacy. Mm -hmm. um, legacy, I tell people all the time, legacy is, it's it's not just what you leave to them, it's what you leave in them. Yeah, yeah. And wow, so I that. want I want to leave a legacy in such a way that one, people, like I, I, rem I was looking at uh, my album for Below Paradise and on the insert, I, I didn't have thank yous to everybody, I just had a dedication to Chase. Mm -hmm. But in there I said at the end of it, because it, it's still a passion of day, but I said, uh, everyone will say your name. Ooh. Like, and, and that came from this. I so I'm I'm gonna do this event. I'm running a half marathon again. I okay, want nice. I want I want you to do it with me. So now is your chance to say yes in front of everybody. Hey. How long is a half marathon? Thirteen point one miles. Oh. You have to run the whole thing. No, you have to finish the. Just thing. finish it. Yeah. Run, you can walk, do that. Whatever. You're a boxer. Yeah, you could definitely do it. You could definitely do it. <laughs> If I can do it, I'll do you, it. you can I'll definitely do it. Do it. Can do it. You want me to? Where, where even if we, even if you do it, even if you have to do it virtually, know it's in Austin, Texas. Okay. Austin, Texas. So if you if you choose to, to do it, if you choose to do it, I'll, I my, so this is my goal. Um, so I started Chase Wellness because of of three different things. One, they will say Chase's name. I, I, he he's real. He exists. Yes. My plan is to do in and on Memorial Day or around it. I want to do a memorial service for for people who've lost loved ones, period. Yeah. Um, I went to one in Dallas one time and it changed my life. Um, I was sitting next to this mom. I know you said we had to go. I'm sorry. No, uh, go ahead. I was, sitting next, to, I, was, <laughs> I, I was sitting next to this mom, man, and, and uh, she started weeping next to me. And we're at this event and my wife took me to it. I'm deep in grief, so I don't even know where we are. I'm loopy in and out of it all. And I'm sitting next to this mom and she is, you know, older, maybe 60s, crying. She, she leans forward and like is on my shoulder a little bit. So I just lean in and hug her and start... Mm -hmm. Rubbing her shoulder, like reach reach across and hug her shoulder, and she's she's bawling, and then she comes up, and I mean no lie, I mean she's I mean snot everywhere, like this is she crying, mm -hmm. and she gets up and she's like, I'm so I'm so sorry, and she wipes her eye, cleans her nose, she wipes her shirt off, she's like I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. It's like no, ma'am, you're fine, you're fine. And I said, can I get you some water? Do you need anything? She said, no, this is perfect. And I was like, oh, wow. okay. And I, oh man, I want to cry talking about it. So she said. 
She said, this is perfect. And I said, it is. And I, I, I know somebody watching this will relate, bro. She said, this is the first time someone has said my son's name out loud since I lost him. Wow. And and that was that was over 40 years ago. Wow. And bro, it just, wow. it broke me, bro. Wow. I was like, <laughs> so now instead of like letting her lean, I like just grabbed right, her. Right, right, right. I just grabbed her, bro. And we just laid there wow. like side by side. And we were just bawling together, man. But when she said it, That's powerful. it, it was, it clicked in my brain and she's right. So many people, when they talk to people who've lost loved ones, I mean, yes, you gotta be wise to pick and choose the moment, but- right. But so many people tiptoed around us with saying Chase's name. Mm-hmm. And for us, we were like, say his name. Like he not yeah. he he was here. He's real. And the fact that he's not here doesn't dis- dismiss that. Like right, right, right. he's a part yes. of our life. Yes. I tell anybody who's lost a child, you're especially no matter if that was your your only only child or if you have other children, you are so like for for instance, for me and Danielle, we 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 had Jaden and we had Chase. Yeah. And Chase passed away. And and someone told me so eloquently you are still the 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 proud father of two boys oh yes never forget that yes and and a lot of times we we want to speak like the census does with how many people in your house right that's 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 what you got that's what you got but in god's economy it's no this is who he gave you yes Yes. so that's still your child so when she said nobody had said her son's name in 40 years out loud except for her Bro, I was like, that'll never happen. It'll never right, happen. Right, right. So that was the motivation. So yes. in light of that, I'm sorry, bro. Got no, you got, no, man. But in yes. light of that, I'm like, okay, one, Chase Wellness, they're going to say his name. Yeah. Two, I want to educate, enlighten, and equip. I just, I have to. There's, and in that, we'll, the, the goal, the main goal of it is exposure. I want to expose you to this world of grief. I want to expose you to a process of healing. And I want to expose you to a life of celebration because we have to learn in moments of lament to really lament and in moments of celebration to really celebrate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like I don't know what y'all going to do today, but at some point I'm going to obligate them to, to go somewhere and get seafood because I want to celebrate Easy. that I am in Tampa. Easy. I'm like, so, but I, <laughs> lament what needs to be lamented, celebrate what needs to be celebrated. True. But then the third thing is I want to walk alongside people. Yeah. So a part of that is doing the half marathon. Yeah. I, I I ha- I just hated running all my life. In football, running running was punishment. So right, right. why would you want to do more exactly. of it? But in this season of life, I it's an it's a it's a representation of perseverance for me. And it. so mm. I never did anything more than two miles in my life. And when I finished yeah, thirteen point one miles, I mean I was hurting head to toe, and then eventually got dehydrated. But oh, nonetheless. <laughs> I finished. I yeah. And so now coming back, like I'm already training. The race is not until uh, January of 2022. Okay. Oh, okay. But I'm already training. Hopefully, bro, to... out the way. I'm with you, bro. That's no, it. We That's should it. both head out there. That's Let's it. I'm it. with it. But I'm training now because they're adamant about like, I think we can do it in a vaccinated world. I think we can make it happen. Oh, yes. But, but on top of that, I'm adamant to do it even if it's virtual because it is a goal of mine to do this race um, because uh, friends of mine that live in Austin are doing it and it's a dope race. But anyway, all of those things said, the idea behind why I wanted to do a lot of this stuff came from really trying to love people into a place of 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 laughter and lamenting. That's kind of the my representation of joy is laughter. So laughter and lamenting or lament and how we're going to do that. So with the podcast, it's a level of laughter and fun and it's a level of also sincerity and honest talk. Mm-hmm. Um, and then with music, I am leaning in heavily you've done it. I feel like everyone has done it and we just never give, give credence to it. Mm. But we all speak from our life experiences and what we're dealing with. I mean, when you, when you wrote a song that you were singing to your baby, I was like, oh yeah, daddy for real, for real. (laughs) He's transitioned. All I need is a minivan. He's transitioned. That's it. He's transitioned. So, For me, I'm just like, okay, I'm going to lean into this season heavily because I've always tried to talk about what's in, true to life. Right. From Kingdom People, it was talking about trying to not like fall into in the sexual sin in college and uh-huh. that whole strong uh-huh. and, and moving all the way now. But well, I'm in college hey, now. Hey, trying to walk it out. Yeah. Can I talk to y'all? Because it's hard and enough. Man. And That's so, so that, true. that all the way to... Now would be me moving yeah, forward yeah. more, bro. I'm like, okay, God, this is where you have me. So I'm gonna speak to these moments, and whomever has ears to hear, let them hear. But but the ultimate goal, and I'll end with this, is I feel like it's just full circle of what happened with this woman on the plane rubbing yeah. my back, saying, "Just have faith." Wow. Just yeah. have faith. Wow. 
So, man, just have faith. Just have That's faith. That's powerful, man. Uh, I'm going to leave it. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Thank yeah, you bro. so much. No man. doubt, man. No doubt, man. Thank you so closure, much, man. man. Just have faith. Um, this has been Southside Rabbi. I am uh, KB. This I mean, is I Mean the Dream. Thank you, Tadashi. Yeah, man. Catch y'all next time. <laughs>